Elliot, welcome back to Taffy's. Great place to be. Music Mecca right here, one of my favorite <laughs> all-time music venues. I love it. Uh, hey, really great to have you back. Let me ask you a couple of questions sure. for our viewers. Sure. So, when did you actually get started loving music? When was the first time we said, I want to pick up an instrument, I want to play? Ten years old. I discovered oh, wow. the drums and never looked back. Oh, my God. Drums for the first five, six years of my life. Then went to guitar, went to bass, went to keys... And the rest is history. Over what time span? Uh, well, professionally from the t from really the 80s. So I uh, hooked up with Dan Hartman, the producer who wrote I Can Dream About You. He yeah. was producing James Brown. He put me on a whole bunch of records like Tina Turner, one of her big hits. And uh, I got a publishing deal with Sony in the 80s. Then Let me stop you right there. Okay. Let me ask you because yeah. a lot of our listeners are going to ask, how do I as a musician go that far? I mean, what happened? Is it luck? Is it persist it's, what is it? It's persistence, it's uh, having a drive, but it's all, all about relationships. It's about keeping your eyes open and connecting with the right people. You have to have, you know, some talent, you have to have your product, but you need to line up all the relationships in order to have a career, no doubt. So when you live in a rural area, what are your chances? Honestly, I mean, if you live in a, like here, yeah. what we do in, in Ohio, what do you have to do? You uh, need to, to get in front of people. You need to play consistently and constantly and take your message to the people as much as you can. There's really no other way because there's no record companies anymore. We have to sort of all do it ourselves now. Okay. So you need to build up a grassroots following. It's still the best way. Word of mouth is still rules. Well, then, of course, I'm going to ask you the question which everybody's going to ask you. How did you actually hook up with Hall & Oates, which is unbelievable? I mean, you yeah. play in front of 100,000 people. How did you do that? How did that come about well, it that started through uh, uh, also a st amazing situation is working with Average White Band prior to Hall and Oates. Gotcha. So uh, working with the the main bass player writer uh, in Average White Band for so many years, I was in that band for 13 years. Um, the bass player Alan Gorey and Daryl had been friends for since the early 70s because they shared the same producer and the same gotcha. record label, Atlantic Records. Yep. So Daryl got introduced to me through the Average White Band and saw me play with them a few times and 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 wanted me in the band basically. So uh, it took a couple of years to line up. I left the average white band because yep. I've been kind of run my right. course with them. And Daryl uh, extended the invitation. So uh, and then of course you know what happened yeah. after that. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been touring with uh, Hall and Oates? It's been uh, going on twelve years now. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, I know you do a collaborative uh, project with them, like uh, on Palladia. I watch you there. Yeah, uh, uh, Daryl's house. Tell us a little bit what the show is about. And when the yeah. show is on, what do you try to achieve there with that show? Well, it's something I never ex expected ever to happen. Daryl had this simple concept of bringing people, it's a some great of show. his peers, into his home. Yep. And uh, it started very small and casually, and then it grew, as we all know now. Gotcha. People know it all over the world. So he just wanted basically to convey uh, what it's like for musicians to get together and have a spontaneous moment yeah. together without an audience. Yeah. And, uh, and as you know, we've had everybody. Oh. Some of my Heroes, Todd Rundgren, yeah. uh, you know, Sammy Hagar, you name it, uh, Smokey Robinson, on and on and on. There's been 80 episodes that I've been fortunate enough to be on every one. So uh, it's an incredible experience. you got to check it out. If you haven't oh, seen wow, it on Palladium, yes, you can easily find it on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. Life it's a sense. great show. I mean, I try, I try to watch it every time. It's yeah. really interesting. And it gives, even though it's entertaining, it gives a great insight who mm -hmm. these people really are, you know what I'm Absolutely. Let me ask you a couple more questions. So mm -hmm. when you were young, who, who, who were really the greatest inspiration for you in your music career mm -hmm. later on? Uh, a lot. I was uh, exposed to a lot of music, having a musical family. So people like Stevie Wonder, of course, gotcha. Todd Rundgren, who I've now yes. worked with many yes. times. It was a huge inspiration yeah. on me. Uh, and a lot of the rock stuff of that era, um, and the Eagles, and Alice Cooper, and then the Sly and the Family Stone. So it was kind of a big variety for me. Who are they today? Who are your... Uh inspirations today who are you still listening to yeah, still, today's market today's market okay well I'm still one of my guitar heroes as a good now you know I'm a multi-instrumentalist yep. but as a guitar player I still my guy is Jeff Beck it's always gotcha. been my my guy yeah. of the, the people that are happening today and there are a lot there's still a lot of great players and people Joe Bonamassa yeah. is currently amazing uh, a guy that's played here is a friend of mine Johnny A who yep. is a fabulous guitar player uh, Gary Clark Jr. is another gotcha. great one there's a lot gotcha. there's certainly a lot you just, we just have to go out and seek them out a little bit more than we did back in that day. It's uh, interesting. Tell us, uh, finally, tell us about what mm -hmm. you're currently doing, which I think is so exciting. 
You've been here the yeah. third time. You put on a hell of a show, if I may say. So I mean, Thank a you. great show. Thank you. Uh, always some new stuff. People love you. Uh, what are you trying to do? What, what are you focused on? Where do you want to go with this? Well, my uh, ambition from the start was always to be my own artist, to write music. That's why I, I kind of taught myself four instruments, was yep. to be a songwriter and convey that. So, you know, I, I have a great balance. So I, I, I operate as an independent artist. So aside from the live from Daryl's house and the Hall and Oats, I'm out there touring every break I get. So I'm out through the Midwest a lot and building up my own following and what's uh, your out my uh, own website? What's your website? ElliotLewis.com ElliotLewis.com Elliot E-L-I-O-T as you see on the screen right. here underneath <laughs> Uh, I can't thank you enough. Any final words for upcoming artists, what you want to suggest to them, what they should do uh, to be successful? Anything you want to say? Well, again, just to work at your craft, but to connect with people, the relationships, keep your eyes open, and get in front of people and play, and just develop it. And, and most importantly, yeah. play what you love. Right. That's the most important. Don't yeah. do what anybody else Follow Dave Grohl's advice. Do it for what you want to play. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Elliot, you, uh, I know you got to go kind of uh, put on the show. Elliot, we thank you from the bottom of your heart. We'll see you soon. Absolutely. Love you, Elliot. Love see you. ya. <laughs>